So I got the Whaler electrical system finished. Uh, it's all mounted in the console. Let me show you what it looks like. We have the tachometer gauge, complete panel. Um, all of it's powered um, through a switch and a relay. Uh, I was originally going to power it from the uh, controller, but I decided just to put it on the switch. Um, even got a horn. So let me go ahead and show you how I got this uh, put together and uh, wire it up. All right, so I'm going to start working on the console. Once we get the hole flipped over and start putting all this together, I want to get this pre-wired as much as possible. So I'm going to show you uh, what I'll be doing. Um, and I'm going to add a fry a tachometer. Um, I think if anything, if you have no other instruments, you should have a tech. Um, this is going to be the panel I'll be putting on here. And uh, I actually have already switched out one of the switches so I can have a horn switch. And um, of course I'll be putting a small horn in. I'll be using some of these connectors I have um, from past projects where I was making uh, dive lights. Uh, IP65 rated. Um, so anything that we put through there is going to be waterproof to some extent. I've already made a uh, template for the uh, control panel or the switch panel and I want it is going to be tight um, I wanted to make it as small as possible make sure I still had uh, some uh, wood some meat left to put the screws through it um, I almost hate cutting a hole in this thing all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out the area where the uh, where the uh, control the switch panel is going to go um, I want it six inches from the edge. I want some working room on the inside because uh, this is where the cable is going to come in and connect. Uh, power cable, uh, cable from the controller, as well as the uh, wires from the um, from the lights. So I want some room to work with there, so six inches from the edge. I've done is I've marked um, this at six inches. And um, the uh, Opening is gonna is four and a half inches. It's seven inches from top to bottom, and um, so what I want to do is center it. Seven less four and a half is two and a half inches. Half of that is one and a quarter. So I've got some marks here at one and a quarter inches. All right, so I'm ready to take the plunge, and I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. And I'm going to use two tools. One a Forstner bit. Um, got this. It's a seven eighths bit. And what I've done, let me zoom in and show you. I've got the corners marked. Um, they are exactly 11 millimeters. And I did this for all four corners. And the reason is um, if you take 7 eighths and you convert it to metric, it's 22 in a small fraction. Um, that should let this force in a bit just hit the edges and still leave a little meat behind. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, like I said, I hate <laughs> I hate cutting into this wood. But uh, huh? got to do what we got to do. I hope I don't screw it up. Alright, the next step is going to be to use a uh, multi-tool with one of these blades to cut it out. It might be a, a bit of an endeavor to be honest with you, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start it. Um, now one of the reasons I like to use a Forstner bit is that it leaves clean edges uh, in the hands of a skilled operator, obviously. Uh, I got a little bit overzealous here and I did mar some things. So I wrestled it with it a little bit, marred the wood in some places. Um, yeah, that's kind of ugly. But the good news is this fits in here perfectly. I made that hole just big enough, which is what I wanted. 
Um, there's enough wood here and here. There's also a brace behind here. Uh, that the structural integrity is uh, pretty solid. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is mount this tachometer, the Ferrer tachometer. Um, it calls for a 3 and 3 8 inch hole. Now I ordered this because 3 and 3 8 is kind of an odd, oddball uh, size. And um, it's actually 85 millimeter, which is a little bit small. Uh, what I did was I actually punched a hole in this piece of cardboard. And I can then see that this tachometer is going to fit, but it's a snug fit. Um, which is fine. I'd rather it be too small and then I can get a little barrel uh, sander to open it up some. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue to mar this beautiful piece of mahogany, unfortunately. So I'm going to go three and a half inches from the bottom. It's, a, it's actually seven inches total, so um, three and a half is the center. And um, it's marked that there. And then three and a half inches from the edge of the... Uh, That might be too much. Let's double check that. Let's see where that's going to land me. Rough. No, it's not too bad. About an inch away from the uh, console. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This is kind of painful <laughs> after all the finish work I did on that. But, um, nope, you got to do it. Using the hole saw leaves a nice clean cut. Now what I did here was flipped it over once the drill bit went through and finished it from the other side. That way I had a clean cut on both sides. All right, so I'm not gonna mount this stuff just yet. Before I do that, uh, I'm gonna clean this all up. Get some um, masking tape on this side to protect the finish, the outside finish. And then I'm gonna put some epoxy um, into this wood, just to soak it in there, just to protect it and uh, make sure that we don't uh, have any exposure to uh, to damp or humidity. So let me go ahead and get this sealed up and after the after I get that done, I'll go ahead and get all the equipment mounted and we'll start the wiring. Well the epoxy is cured nicely so uh, it's time to get this mounted. So what I'm doing here is carefully marking the holes and pre-drilling them. Uh, that way uh, the screws don't tear anything up when I, I'm putting it together. I did put a gasket that came with the unit on it and I uh, Gave it a little bit of a coating of a silicone um, to help uh, provide a seal. The Faria tachometer's got its own mounting bracket, and I actually had to cut it down because uh, the wood was thick enough that um, the bracket stood too far back. But it's got little posts you can cut off, and it mounts with the actual terminal nuts that you would use to connect it. All right, so everything's mounted. Um, what happens now is I stare at this for a while, and I uh, figure out where to put the horn relay and start mapping out a, uh, a a wire map, I guess you could call it. So uh, let me stare at this for a while and figure out where I'm going to put everything. So I stared at this thing long enough and I finally came up with a wire map, um, which I think is good. Uh, I went ahead and mapped it out. Let me show you what I've got here. If you'll take a look, um, I've got these uh, two buses, um, one negative, one positive. Uh, I've got the relay. And I was lucky enough to find this uh, really skinny masking tape, and uh, it's from a long forgotten project. I can't even remember what it was for, probably some pinstriping. But i um, got several rolls of that. So I've kind of laid out a map of, as to um, what's going to go where. I'm going to put some wire guides down now, and then I'm going to start running wires. And uh, the way I'm going to wire this, and you probably can't see this, but I'm going to have a push button switch. I originally was going to run everything off the ignition, but I started thinking if, uh, if I'm anchored, do I want to have the ignition on so I can uh, put the anchor light on? The, I want access to the horn at all times. Um, so it, the easiest thing to do is just to put an on off switch. Power the relay up and um, power the whole thing up uh, off of one switch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and start getting this wiring in. Anyway, let me go ahead and get the uh, guides in. So I took a little bit of a different approach to doing the video on this. There were several hours worth of video, and what I didn't want to do was make a video that was excessively long to show the, uh, the wiring that I did. So I decided to do a time lapse of sorts. It's actually little video segments, I mean, literally just less than a second each, um, just basically showing how the uh, wiring came in, how the uh, wire guides were put in. 
Speaking of wire guides, you'll notice uh, I didn't like the uh, original ones too much, so I replaced them with these that have a little bit of a, a loop in them. Using these gave me a lot more flexibility in how I ran the wires and how much wires I could get into a bundle. I used mostly crimp connectors on these and the types that are waterproof that you heat shrink the uh, covering over. And you can see the wiring coming together here. And uh, here are some bullet connectors. These are um, pretty handy. I use these for the main power coming into the uh, console from the battery. I'll use the male connectors on the console side because there should be no power here when it's disconnected. All right, so I'm getting ready to put some terminals on the uh, courtesy lights, balanced stern light. Balanced stern light will be on one connector with four pins. Um, courtesy lights will be on a dual pin connector. None of the connectors match. Uh, everything on this side is going to be female, only because it might have power on it, so female is safer. The opposite end will be, uh, it'll be um, males. Um, likewise with this one, this is the, uh, you probably can't see it, but uh, this, the main power are actually male here because there shouldn't be any power when they're disconnected. The other side will be female. So anyway, let me go ahead and give you a close-up, show you how I'm going to do this with these little Molex connectors. So the first thing I got to do is connectorize these pins. Um, I'm going to do the bow first. I know which one it is because I've got them um, cut. And uh, I'm going to move this label or relabel it if I have to. And um, I want them to be flush. You know, likewise, the uh, anchor lights are going to have to be flush as well. That's because I'm putting the bow and stern lights on the same four pin connector. The courtesy lights will go on their own two pin connector. Twist these so that they don't come apart. And what I have found is that these work a lot easier if you squeeze these together ahead of time a little bit. So. So it's in there so that the little ridge is just above it and it should crimp down nice and neat. Yeah, let's see. Alright, now these miraculously push in from the back. So, okay. And they do click into place. That's the bow. I'm going to mark that wire. Now I have to push those through because they haven't clicked into place yet. So luckily, I've got a number of tools that are suitable for that. So you can see the two on the bottom here, bow lights, they're clicked in place. There's a gland that's going to go over this too that holds everything in place and makes it waterproof really. And I'll show you that shortly after I get the, uh, the stern light uh, wires connected. Alright, that's clicked into place. So there's, there's a rubber gland on the back. Um, keep it waterproof and I'll show you what the gland that goes in the front looks like <coughs> basically just sits in there and um, clicks in and we now have a waterproof connector so the way this will work once we assemble the male side of it the male side will just literally just uh, click in there and um, same thing, gland on the back. Uh, pins will be uh, sticking out the front. It's actually, it's got a, uh, a seal that goes on it as well. So let me go ahead and get the um, courtesy lights done. And um, 
pretty much I'll be done with the console. We can go ahead and get it mounted. All right, so the console's all wired up. But before I do anything else, I'm going to have to put the interior into the Boston Whaler. If you're interested in seeing how I did that, just click on this link here and uh, you'll see the interior installation. All right, the uh, console's installed. Actually, all of the interior is installed. So it's time to get on with the wiring. So here I'm basically going to add the two bullet connectors, the uh, female side, to the um, wires coming from the battery. I'm not going to put in the segment where I connect it to the battery. That's fairly straightforward. But again, everything's crimp connectors with shrink wrap on them. Shrink the heat shrink these. I'll probably do is put a little dab of uh, silicone grease on the inside as well. By the way, I am a little bit of a neat freak. Uh, so I got this braided sleeve, um, which I'm going to, I hope, without too much trouble get onto the uh, this wire you have to open it up some you got to kind of push it together <laughs> that was about perfect I could have took some off but I'll deal with that later so that way I don't have this uh, this bare wire it's nice and neat actually at first, I was a little concerned. I thought this braided sleeve would not be big enough. But um, as it turns out, if you push it and expand it and then uh, pull it, it wraps itself quite nicely uh, around the wiring and leaves you a nice protective cover. Now, what I'll end up doing is I'll tie wrap that together here. Um, it'll do two things. It will hold it in, and it will also um, hold the ends of these uh, braids together. Balance turn lights. I just want to keep track of who's who here. The yellow is the uh, anchor light, stern light, whatever you want to call it. Cut these to the same length. Rip them about three eighths, a little bit more than that. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin on these as I uh, strip them, because that way the wires won't get uh, moved around and disturbed, and then I'll have strands sticking out, which sucks. So I just press the wire. It's going to make it hard to get this thing on. Let's see. Style. Stern. Bow. Bell light and red to the right on top. Nice click. Same concept for the male side of the connectors. They push in through the rubber gland in the back, click into place, and become uh, waterproof. Everything's uh, in there. 
this goes in to lock it in place like so I don't know if you can see that but I'll push that in there it'll click in and lock it in place there we go it's all put together so I'm going to run it through the hole in the sideboard and the clamp Well, I've got the console wired up and completed, so uh, let's give it a quick test and see what it looks like. Tack, control panel, light it all up, horn, bell light, stern light, courtesy lights, can't see those. Uh, this will be the uh, fish finder and of course the horn anyway the uh, wiring is complete and um, let's get on with the rest of the restoration I hope you enjoyed this video if you did hit like share and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching